Okay, I've done some pretty good preliminary cleaning of the joint here, uh, so I'm going to test test uh, the fit out. But you know what? You got to make sure that uh, you're getting the right piece in there. So, like before, as I was telling you, make sure you go ahead and set up your pieces again according to your oh, according to your marks. See that? Make sure that fits. Those are our long pieces. Make sure these fitting. See that's that's down. That's our face frame. That's our or our face, and that's our face. So we can pull it back and just double check to make sure which which pieces goes where. And I can almost guarantee that this isn't going to fit in very well. It's only happened to me a couple times where it fit in perfectly the first time. So you're gonna what you want to do is take this and try to get it to go on. You can take the hammer a little bit and tap it, but likely it's it's not going to even go on. So you this will help you by looking down through here. You can see which pieces are really tight in there, and. Uh, you go through and mark them with a little pencil. I'll show you how I do that. So the first place I check is the sides here just to make sure that that those are uh, going to fit all right. And it looks like I might be a little tight over here on this edge so you probably can't see this very well but I'm gonna mark a little X so I know to trim there and then uh, on some of these you know I can see a little space on one side and uh, looks a little tight on the other um, and once you trim it and you can start hitting this downward you can start seeing if there's some tight spots that are hanging up usually it'll be in the middle and uh, so you'll pull it back out and you'll mark those spots that where it was really tight or where it's starting to push wood down and just micro chisel those and just do a little at a time don't take off too much just trim a little bit and then come and try to fit it again and then do that over and over until uh, it fits down really nicely. So you can see that looking in there I was looking down and I saw that that side was fitting a little tight and that side was fitting a little tight and you can see that it correlates because there's still some pencil left on there. So I'll trim those a little bit. Now a little word of caution. I like to use um, a thicker chisel because I can just rest along the bottom and work my way like that. Just take off little shavings of it but make sure you come from both sides and then once you get closer to being finished you'll find that your tight spots aren't necessarily the whole thing anymore it's just going to be like down here or down here or here or here so you want to mark those specific locations and then come from whichever side uh, best suits you so you want to flip this piece or work this piece around in the work workbench vise and then just keep trimming So every time after I make a trim, I always like to go back and erase where that was or else I could get confused and uh, next time I do markings I could go back and trim something that's already been trimmed and that could cause a problem in your joints fitting together. So I'll test fit this now that I've made a few more trims on those spots. You can use a rubber mallet if you'd like. Can you, so you can see it's starting to fit in, but, it, but it's tight, especially along the middle there. So I'm going to grab my pencil and look in. And you can look under here and see if there's any wood being pushed down from it being too tight. And you can also see what, where the gaps are. Now I can see some spots right in there. That one looks okay on the front front side of here sometimes it's hard to mark so you'll have to mark it when you bring it out the sides look okay maybe a little tight there on that side in the middle so i'll go through and i'll just trim those parts and i'll make sure i go, get them from both sides so that the so that it stays flat when i'm chiseling in there so i've gone a couple times uh trying to 
get things um, trimmed up. You can see this is exactly what I was talking about. When you start to see something like that underneath, that'll be, give you a great sign that you need to trim that. You need to tr trim that area along there and that area along there because that's because that's so tight it's pushing that wood out of the way. So that's really good when you can see something like that. It'll give you a good sign. So I think we're pretty much there. It's going down without too much force required. This is going to be pretty tight. And that looks pretty good. So that's pretty nice. It's not perfect. You know, there's a little tiny hair of a crack there and there. But uh, overall, it's pretty tight. Besides, we're doing hand tool woodworking, not. Uh, machining and milling and manufacturing you know something that looks completely absolutely perfect you can tell is done with machines but all the old beautiful furniture um, you can see signs of the, the craftsman working on it pretty nice so go ahead and do that for all four corners and fix your box together and uh, then we'll we'll see where we're at so you can see that I've finished trimming all of the tails and pins and now I'm ready I put together uh, the first uh, the u-shape and now I'm going to put together <coughs> either the front or the back here uh, looks like this is the front so I'm just going to you could see both of the tails and we're going to just push them in there so and I've already tested these these joints individually so I know that it will work so I'm going to do a, a complete test here uh, before I do some trimming and gluing up There you have it. We've got the box. So then after you've got this, uh, <clears throat> you can go ahead and uh, just uh, trim it and glue it up. Or you can glue it up and then go back through and <clears throat> trim all these, uh, all of these tails off with your hand planes but when you're planing don't go over the edge like that or you'll tear out that end grain. Make sure you plane part way and then plane part way. And then you'll have and uh, in uh, some following videos we will discuss some traditional bottoms for the boxes. Instead of uh, taking a router or a plow plane and cutting out a groove we'll, uh, we will <coughs> do more traditional bottom where we actually use some molding planes uh, a, a beading molding plane to put on the bottom uh, to create some bottoms and then we'll nail it on with some old uh, style nails and we'll do some other videos with uh, building a lid and, and uh, some other stuff.